to order, you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, welcome. We have an invitation for a citizen to schedule time on the condition, uh, commission agenda for an item not listed and when wanting to speak during this the start of the meeting. Any requested action items must be scheduled for a future meeting. And then we would like to discuss anything with us. Seeing none, we'll move on to item four, which is approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Set. Motion made and second. Any comments or additions? Don't see any additions. No. Okay. Motion say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Item five is consent agenda items. We have approval of the minutes. Requests, approval of the personnel action notices with documents, approval of cellular authorizations, and approval of the human services report. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments? Any comments on any of the items? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Borzma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Next item is a recognition of uh, appraiser Rusty Bransrud on becoming a certified appraiser assessor. You have the documents in our, I don't know if we have that up to put on the screen at all. It is. All I have to do is look around it. Anyway, uh, there's Rusty here. He's back there in the corner. I see him now. You're hiding back there. Uh, congratulations on your certification. We'll, we appreciate that you went through the trouble to get through that certification. It's, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure how tough it is, but it's always tough when you get certified. Any questions or comments for Russ? Just thank, thank you. you for being, being willing to do that. It makes a huge difference for the county. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks again. I'm sure there's a sort of certificate you're going to get somewhere along the line if you haven't gotten it already. All right. Item B is our 2020 Disabled American Veterans Awards. Mr. Bob Hill, a veteran himself, will help me hand out those awards. Thank you, Commissioner Bartley and Commissioner and the whole board. First award... First of all, we'd like to explain why we are here. We are here because our 2020 State Disabled American Veterans Convention was scheduled for Brookings, South Dakota in May, and it was canceled because of the COVID-19. Throughout the state of South Dakota, whenever the host city sponsors, typically they get most of the awards because we write them up that way. And uh, so we ended up with a stack of awards and really no way of getting them out to get public recognition as people deserve. So we requested through the county commission that we be allowed to do this, and they graciously allowed us to do this. So we want to thank the county commission. My first award is the, if I could get Mike Holhauser to come up, please. Mike Holhauser began his career for, in providing services for veterans in 1994 when he became employed by the state of South Dakota. In 2010, after 16 years with the state of South Dakota, he jumped over to Brookings County, and we do thank him for that. He was hired as our Brookings County Veteran Service Officer and County Welfare, and Mike has twice served as president of the South Dakota County and Veterans Service Affairs Association, and he gets Veteran of the Year for the state of South Dakota. Congratulations. We'll give it to him later. Okay. The, the next award, the awardee couldn't make it. It's Representative Tim Reed, and it's for the Outstanding State Representative. People may not realize this, but Brookings County has one of the largest Korean War displays around of a miniature museum that actually travels on wheels. And we actually had set up, was, was going to have a full-fledged display over at one of the local hotels. 
and it was going to be a ceremony for the Korean War, 70th anniversary of the start of the Korean War, where all that got tabled. But Representative Reed did go out of his way and sponsored it and got us a proclamation for, for May 15th to honor the Korean War veterans for their service there. We've been in Korea since 1945, and that proclamation did that. And for that reason, he was, he was elected as our outstanding state representative, and he'll be given his award at a later date. <laughs> our next awardee, if they could step up, is Alpha Media LLC. No one from the radio station, okay? Well, they, they're, they're getting an award called Outstanding DAV and All Veterans Support and Patriotic Values for the Community. They've got five stations in one building. Every Thursday at 9 a.m., radio announcer Bald Bob, resembles me, for 1430 KBRK, he, they host a Veterans Forum. Every morning at 7.44, as I get ready to come to work, I hear the Pledge of Allegiance being played on B102.3, and that's announcer Brian Waltz. And he's been playing that since 2001, when we had the 9-11 attacks. And on two separate occasions, the DAV, along with Brookings County, has been on the radio station through the Carful Karaoke program, which of course is sponsored by Best Choice Real Estate. And there it was Brad DeBeer that, that put us on. And um, they, they basically go on the air and they support veterans. That's why we call them the Veterans Advocate. And they'll be giving their award. Well, except on their behalf, I'll make yeah. sure they get it. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, our next one has had a mishap and could not make it this morning. It's Outstanding DAV Veterans Advocate different than Veteran of the Year that, that whole house got. Miss, this goes to Connie Johnson from South Dakota State University, and she works in the veterans, veterans Support section over at South Dakota State University, and she does programming for things such as the South Dakota State University Veterans re Retreat that goes to the Black Hills. She works with the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks to get a snowmobile club set up, and, and she really provides assistance for this post-traumatic stress syndrome that's really affecting our younger troops. And it's an award well won, too. So thank you for that. Now I know these people are here. <laughs> <laughs> the next award goes to Outstanding Small Business for a Veterans Advocate. And this goes to Best Choice. The, uh, the real estate agent who works for this company named Carrie Westland. She has uh, temporarily departed the area, so she couldn't make it today. Her sister's here, along with, of course, the Best Choice team, as she refers to them as. But um, Brookings County has, was invited, along with the disabled American veterans, to uh, be on the car full karaoke. And we went there and we sung patriotic songs. And they just show support for the whole community. And in November last year, the reason I shaved, I, I had, wasn't going to shave until I passed away. She had this program called Whiskers for Warriors event. And you had to shave to be part of it. So ever since then, I had to shave off. And, and the wife won't let me grow it back. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they did donate, and, and she donated over $1,400 to the Disabled American Veterans Chapter. And she was also the liaison to the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. So that just shows that Best Choice promotes veterans' advocacy in the county. And they're not the only ones, but they're the ones we were recognizing because they're a good bunch of people. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> then the last one for now, we got another person coming in late. It's the 727 Transportation. It's a it's a quasi 727. They 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 refer to themselves as a 727 slash DAV 
They do a poker run in Brookings. They've done it for the last 15 years. Last year was the 15th anniversary. And uh, this group of people, they served in Iraq. Brookings, they, from, they, they left from the National Guard Army over here. They went to Iraq, did their service, came back, and then they disbanded the unit and shipped them, I think, to Iowa or, or somewhere. Somewhere besides here. And um, so this group, for their reunion once a year, they could get together, drink beer, and, and reminisce about the old times. But instead, what they've done is, since there was a transportation unit, they wanted to give back to the community. And in this case, they give back statewide. The Disabled American Veterans has got this thing called Transportation Network. Disabled American Veterans Transportation Network. You can see a DAV van parked outside. We, the DAV buys those vans. We donate them to the Veterans Administration, veterans who take our veterans back and forth to VA hospital appointments. And the DAV puts a lot of money into that. We've got two hospital coordinators. We've got one based out of Sioux Falls. We've got one based out of Rapid, uh, Fort Meade, Sturgis. And over the last 15 years, this organization has donated $268,000 to that organization. And in 2019, they donated $43,000. So for that, we want to thank them. I, I'd just like to comment on that. It's, yes, this group puts a lot of work into this uh, event. But if it wasn't for the Brookings community and surrounding communities of the state of South Dakota, and the participants that come and support this event, this event would not be successful with each and every one of yours help. It's a team effort, and thank you for that. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And this is Sergeant Major Bob Foster. Uh, one later, Thank you all. We'll move on to routine business with department head reports here. Uh, we have to Brian? approve the claims. Claims. Nope. Oh, okay. Is there a motion to approve the claims? So moved. Motion made and seconded. Any comments on the claims? I did hand out um, one change this morning. Uh, there was a register, and then I emailed out yesterday the uh, register for all of the cell phone reimbursements for July as well. Any other comments or questions on the claims? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Horsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Under department head reports, we'll start again, but we're going to do Brian with the highway first, and he has a report that he's handed out also. mentioned uh, to a few of you guys earlier, I uh, got an update for the bridges south on 77 and what's in my report uh, compared to what I asked uh, Mr. Ritterhouse with the DOT to send me. Uh, they're a little bit different. So I'll start off with uh, John's email here uh, between him and the contractor. And... They realize they're getting close to the time frame, but they are going to be asking for a time extension. Um, we obviously know the high water levels that we sustain this uh, winter and fall. And then now with the uh, setbacks they're facing with the obstacles, and including the concrete and, and the footings from the old uh, structures, that they're going to be looking at having to push that back because they're nearly doubling the size of their coffer dams in order to do the work they need to do. And uh, so I asked John to put together a report here. Uh, I didn't get it until yesterday. So um, they're currently working on uh, bent four, or yeah, contractor uh, is working on the coffer dam for bent three. They're bent four and 
uh, abutment five uh, subtractor work has been completed, and now we got uh, you know two and three to go. So they're looking at about three to four weeks apiece on them. And then his estimate, now we'll have to sign something here in the future that we get from the DOT to allow that extension, but uh, his estimate as of right now would be anticipating completion, you know, November 1st, which was originally August 15th. So I guess I've been pretty good about bringing you guys a report every every couple weeks on what's happening out there and I know last uh, meeting we talked about it an extent and I wanted to make sure that you guys were well aware of what's going on out there I know there's concerns that they aren't out there uh, but in John's eyes uh, the two-man crew or whatever they might have out there uh, the contractor feels that that might be all they need in that type of situation so I, as far as pushing them goes in the way the DOTs uh, in their eyes feel that at this point in time liquidated damages aren't in the picture yet. Now that's something we can talk about before we sign that you know the extension but yet I have yet to receive that so uh, once we near the completion date August 15th I will obviously keep you guys up to date on that. Yeah. So that's the report on the uh, bridges. Any, any questions on that report? Let's just cover that first here, quick. I, I do have a question. All right, the timeline that we're looking at would put us past harvest again. Correct. And part of that road's opened up now as you go by the, the south bridge. Yep. Is there anything that we ought to be looking at for travel routes for farmers that would be helpful to our citizens? We have looked into that, and primarily the roads that are getting the most traffic. I mean, after we got that south stretch open, there's, a two, there's two stretches of township gravel road in Moody County. And we've been working with Moody County, and I've been working with the township supervisors down there in order to try to help alleviate some of the issues that we're facing on those roads because our, those roads took a lot of damage when they were at their weakest point and we have been helping them out with gravel and we have been helping them out with maintaining those those couple of areas so i have been working with the township supervisors in moody county and in in brookings county in order to try to help them uh, as these roads around that area are, are getting damaged just because of like you said it's the getting to the fields it's and 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 helping them try to maintain that so not all the burden is on the townships. So I, I'm, we're doing the best we can in order to try to help the townships out because it's not only affecting Brookings County, it's affecting Moody County also. Thank you. Okay, no other questions, go ahead. All right, uh, second here, we started our asphalt project. You probably noticed that was our largest on the claims. Uh, we finished County Road 6, and that was milestone number one, and that's between Brookings County 77 and 7. Uh, what it consisted of was a uh, one-inch mill uh, to help profile the road out, and then those millings went onto the shoulder. And the last couple weeks, we've been working on dressing up that shoulder and uh, grading back into the farm uh, and field entrances. Uh, milestone number two, the notice to proceed was issued July 20, or June 25th, and that had a 14-day window, and as of June 26th, uh, and today, they, they hadn't returned. I mean, they, they paved for a day and left, so, I, you know, we had a 14-day window in there, and I don't know if we're going to see completion on that, but That'll be down the road. We'll talk about that again. Uh, we'll see how far they get when the completion date on that arrives, which will be next Monday. And I don't think they're going to get done with that. And then milestone number three, which is County Road 8, has is, is been milled, but there's no, no asphalt been put down on that. So that's where we're sitting at with the asphalt project. Uh, I'm assuming they're out paving today. I've not heard from the engineer or contractor, but... Uh, we've only got about two days of paving on that, and we have a 14-day calendar day window, so 
we're going to be looking at liquidated damages on that because they ain't there. And we'll look at that a little farther down the road. We'll see how far they get. Um, June 18th, we, uh, that week we sustained a lot of wind uh, along County Road 10 near the grade raise out, on, out by Highway 81. Um, due to the high water out there and, and there is no drainage for those ponds out there, uh, you know, we placed dang near 10,000 ton of riprap just on the shoulder of the road to try to, to armor that shoulder up. But uh, this might be a, a situation, and we're looking at it uh, as far as we might have to look at raising that little portion of road there again. I, I know my crew has informed me that's been done in the past, but now with that, that grade raise there from the state and with the waves crashing on it for about four days straight, uh, the, it just started eating away the road. And I hate to see that little quarter mile stretch or eighth mile stretch uh, just close down that road. It is our, it is a, our county road 10. Um, but we're gonna be looking at it. I'm, I'm hoping the water is gonna continue to go down because it'll be a little easier to address what we need to do out there. But it is a, it is a situation we might have to face sooner than later in order to uh, keep that road open for the residents out there. But just wanted to inform you of that. Uh, June 25th, we were awarded one of the federal grants we applied for uh, at uh, 4678 or 81.95% with the Brookings County match of 18.05% at uh, 80,322. So we did get one of those. So I was, I was happy that we uh, moved forward on that. And I understand later today we'll be talking about our our budget process and how that's going to move forward. Aside from that, we've been replacing quite a few culverts and patching in behind them when we get done. We've done uh, one on County Road 4, uh, Brookings County 7, we did two. Brookings County 8, we did two. And on Brookings County 9, we did nine culverts. And then uh, as far as mow mowing's going, our goal is to have all Brookings County hard surface road mowed by July 4th. and we. Uh, we made that happen prior to the long weekend. And then uh, one of the things that I'm sure you guys noticed in the claims is I wanted to discuss with the purchase of the trailer that I made. Uh, I had in the claims that there was a, this was an unbudgeted expense, but my budget will be able to absorb it. Uh, the cost is most likely to be deferring the purchase of a pickup. I've looked into buying a pickup again now that the COVID scare has kind of been over, but from my understanding, and I'm working with some sales men, uh, salespeople, we might not be looking in, at receiving that until after the first of the year because it is a custom order and they're trying to catch back up. Uh, so we might not be able to get that purchased. And then obviously the uh, plow truck, I got an update on that. We'll get the truck, but the, as far as the equipment goes, I don't think we're going to receive that equipment, and we don't pay for everything until we get the machinery. So that's one thing that uh, I'm looking at. And then the uh, purchase of a service truck, we had we came in at uh, forty nine thousand five hundred, and we had a hundred thousand budgeted. So we're looking at a lot of purchases we ain't going to be making this year, and. One of the biggest issues we're having uh, and why I wanted to purchase this trailer is we don't have a trailer long enough to handle these one-piece culverts we're putting in. I know I've been pushing it a lot with the townships, working with them, and now they're starting to understand when they tear these culverts out where they're failing is usually in the center of the road where the, where the bands are. So I've been trying to switch at least to be getting into a situation where the band might be on the edge of the road where it doesn't see as much uh, pressure. So I guess I just wanted to inform you guys on that. And then uh, I received multiple quotes there again, but due to COVID-19, other equipment suppliers were not able to produce something within the time frame we were looking at. So I, I did a lot of shopping around before I did this, but uh, one of the things as far as the trailer went is the axle components. They, they're made out in Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio, 
and there's a lot of places out there that are still still shut down. So I was lucky enough to able to find a supplier that could supply us with a trailer we were looking for. Just wanted to make sure you guys were up to date on that. And another thing I wanted to bring up is I would like to look at purchasing a side dump trailer this year, yet also due to the fact that we're looking at a lot of expenditures we're not going to be able to spend our money on that's going to push my equipment budget back that we're looking at for next year back a year. And I feel it'd be a benefit to us. I guess I would be looking at purchasing this off of the source well or even possibly looking at used. But a lot of the time when we look at used, it's what are we buying? So I'll uh, bring that up at a future meeting and, and we can talk about that. Uh, Wednesday, July 1st, we received a call from dispatch that a bridge uh, versus a car collision. Uh, luckily, nobody was injured, but our bridge railing uh, suffered some pretty catastrophic damage, uh, enough to warrant the closure of County Road 25 between 14 and, and 30. And uh, I had the banner come out the next morning, and we did an inspection and kind of came together with a game plan on what we could do. And uh, Brookings County crew had her open back up by that afternoon. So there was a temporary closure out there, and that was what that was about. And I would like to discuss that today at our budget hearing. I think this is a structure that we might want to consider looking at doing ourselves uh, compared to like what we did on uh, the, the structure south of the power plant out there. Um, th this bridge is in tough shape and we we're lucky we could get it uh, patched back together enough to get it open but it is one of those deals that uh, I, I feel is a ticking time bomb and, and my living out there now I see the amount of traffic on that road and that's one thing I want to do uh, prior to bringing a lot of that before I bring a lot of that up I'm going to get some traffic counts out there but uh, we that road is a very very heavily truck trafficked road and I'm concerned now with the inspection process coming up now having Colin out there and looking at it as of right now he does not feel that that will warrant a posting but we could be looking at a posting in the near very near future any other questions I have, Mr. A, I have a question on on the bridge who ran in, not, not the person's name, but was it a, a citizen that ran into the bridge? Yeah. So is there an insurance proceeding? I'm working with the sheriff, uh, submitting what, you know, my cost of materials and manpower was, and then they'll be following up on that. Thank you. So. Any other questions for Brian? Brian, the trailer, are you looking to purchase that a little boy trailer then? No, this is a gooseneck trailer, pull behind a pickup. Okay. Any other questions? Do you just questions? roughly have an idea what a side dump will cost? Just roughly. Roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of probably 50, 50 some thousand estimate. And, and a lot of why I'm looking into purchasing a semi trailer is just the sheer amount of I can haul that same amount of material with the same amount of manpower or I can have a truck with a trailer with this with a manpower and I can haul double the amount of material so I, I guess I'm looking at as of you know I I just received yesterday another resignation so I were he's moving on but there again I'm I'm struggling to keep us at full staff and we're stretched pretty thin so it's just uh kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes yep. any other questions saying none thank you very much uh we do have a nine o'clock hearing which should be happening in a moment we're waiting for a call in from uh an uh, application for j street pub does that come in yeah, she was going to call on her behalf as well. Well, we'll start out with a public hearing and an action to approve a special events license for J Street Pub. Is there a motion to approve? 
So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. And go ahead and give us a report if you'd like. Or are they here now? Maybe they're outside. Um, I think Andrea was going to call in. But I can just speak on her behalf too. Okay. I see our, our driver is here with a disabled American veteran. So let's take a moment to do, to do that and see if she calls in. If that's okay with everybody, I'm without objection. Mid. Oh. All right, let's move forward. J Street Pub is here or not here? You want to give a report on it then? Right. Yep, I can do that. Um, so J&A Diedrich LLC is applying for a one-day special event beverage license. They will be bartending at a wedding on August 29th at Bennett Barn, which is located in Brookings County. They have applied for this type of license in the past. Um, so attached for you in your packet was the application as well as the uh, notice that was published in the papers. All right, any comments from the public on the uh, motion, on the application, any public comment? Any comment on the telephone? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and we'll move to comments from the commission. I just have a question for the sheriff. Has there been any problem in the past? Thank you. Is, okay. is, is there any limit on how many of these they can have in a certain amount of time? or? They can have, in our ordinance, we have that they can have uh, up to three special event license within a calendar year. The establishment or the residents? No, the, the people applying for it. So J&A. They can apply for three of these types of licenses within the year. Okay. Yep. And Brookings County, we, we, we don't have a fee to apply for it. Any other questions? I assume we're ready to vote. We'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. We are going to move to the special presentation. Bob? Mr. Toll? This is our final award. It's the Outstanding Disabled American Veterans Transportation Network Driver Award. The DAV Brookings County Driver of the Year is Calvin Tolley. Calvin has made the most trips for Brookings County this past calendar year. When he knows that I haven't had a response from the volunteers for a trip to the VA, he will contact Eileen, the driver coordinator, and offer to drive. He has stopped by on his own initiative at times and moved the vehicle to clear snow after a snowstorm event at a moment's notice. He also offers to get in, to, to get the vehicle into the shop for an oil change and has changed out windshield wipers so we are ready for the rainy season. All of our drivers do a good job and, and they are there for the veterans, but Calvin stands out for the year 2019 to 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. I see our 905 is here, so we'll move on to our 905 public hearing in action to approve a malt beverage in SD South Dakota Farm wine license for SVK properties. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. We're going to open up the public hearing at this point in time. Todd, if you have comments, you may come up if you'd like. All right. Any other public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. We already have our motion on the floor. Are there questions from the commission? I have Mr. a question Pace. for Mr. Voss. The, you're listed as the applicant, and then in our notice of hearing, <clears throat> it says SVK Properties will be the owner of the uh, license. Is that correct? 
is SVK Properties and LLC. Okay, so on the documents that were filed, we don't have that proper to, properly listed, and it's important that the alcohol license be in the right legal name, and it should be SVK Properties LLC, is that correct? So we'll need to correct that on the license. That's not what's on the company supplemental information form. And Mr. You're, Pierce, are you talking about the application or are you talking about the public notice? I'm talking about this form right here. The application. We can make that correction. And, and I'm sorry, you said you're 100% owner of the, of the company? And do you have any ownership interest in any other um, businesses that hold an alcoholic beverage license? Because that has to be listed in the next section. And, and that does have to be listed. Uh, Todd, I'm going to have you come up to the microphone, if you would, please. And I only knew that because you're my neighbor next door downtown. So, okay. so that part of the application has to be corrected. Okay. What properties are you listed? Go ahead. It would be the former Ram Pub and then also the Wild Hair. And also what? The Wild Hair that, that I so, own part of. I mean, we can make that correction. I mean, I, I think Marnie out at the state at the Department of Revenue um, follows up with these applications that are submitted by uh, the person, the applicant. So I would think that once it gets to the state, if Marnie has to do some investigation more on this license, she would. But yes, I mean, we can, I can give the application back to Todd, but it would be up to him to complete it fully and then our office just submits it to the state on his behalf. Marnie would have to follow up with if his application is complete or not. I think we have a duty when we, and don't take this personally, but we have a duty when we approve an alcohol license that the application's completed correctly. I don't have a problem with, and I'm in favor of the license, but the application has to be done properly because there are all these other laws that hinge on the information that's put in the application. And Marty and Peer might not know to ask those questions. That's why it comes in front of us, so that so that, that gets filled in. So you're suggesting that we cannot approve this today? Well, I, I think we can approve it, subject with, to with him the correcting application. the application. I, the... I don't have a problem with that. Dan okay. might have an opinion on it, but but we need to have the, a completed application. Is this a new license, or is this one that you... Well, this is the beer license that goes along with the liquor license that I was already granted. Okay. So you've already had... You, this is just one that you have already. This is one I just have to add to the other one. Okay. To, to sell beer at the location. Okay. Because we have a certain amount we can have, and I just didn't... And I think we were maxed. So this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a new license for the location... Um, the old Midway camp between between Brookings and Volga. This is a new license, a new malt beverage license. Malt beverage, though, it's not. Yes. yes. So there are no, there is no limit to the right. number of this type of license that the county can issue right. out out in the county. The liquor license is that there there is a limit based on population that um, Mr. Voss was approved on about a month ago or so. For that same that, location. That, that's what I was just kind of wondering. Yeah. Why, if he has a liquor license, why he has to apply for a malt beverage license? Two different types Two of different things. Licenses. Okay. Liquor versus beer. Right. <laughs> you think the liquor? Two licenses. Could, could be, it wouldn't be very. It doesn't make sense that you could sell liquor but not beer. I mean, you think if you had the full liquor license, it would encompass everything. That One would I think. Thought and then yeah. realized <clears throat> that I had to get this one. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right, so my question is, is do we need an amendment to the motion we can pass it as stipulated a complete application? Yeah, I, I would just vote on the amendments to the application and then vote. That's kind of what I thought. Yep. So you'd like to make that as an amendment, stipulate I'll, to the corrections? I'll, complete I'll, application. Make, I'll move to amend that um, we approve a corrected application 
that would put the correct name for SVK Properties LLC on the application so it shows up correctly on the license and that Mr. Voss amend to list the name of any officers, directors, partners, or stockholders of the applicant having a financial interest in any other alcoholic, alcoholic beverage license as required on the application. I'll second that. All right, any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, we'll call the roll on the amendment. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. All right, now we have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion as amended? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. All right, let's go back then. We've got those completed. We're for regular business. We'll go to Marty for his report from the Sheriff's Department. Good morning. Good morning. We made it through the weekend with uh, no big trouble with the 4th of July. It was busy with... Uh, uh, I think it, this 4th of July was special just because of everything that's been going on. So uh, increased traffic at all the lakes, had complaints, speeding and different things and at uh, all the lakes and just trying to keep everybody uh, as safe as we can. Uh, we had some, used some of the federal overtime money to put extra staff out to uh, try to slow people down and, and so forth. And, uh, uh, but otherwise the, the weekend went, uh, went uh, good. Um, we're struggling at the jail with uh, quarantining as I have seven work release. So really, I only can put seven up there. So I got 22 beds up there, but I only can use seven. Uh, just for the fact is, is that they're going out for work each day, worried about, uh, you know, contaminating, coming back in with the, with the virus or whatever. Um, you know, we take temperatures and things like that. And then I have four downstairs in quarantine still. So we're struggling with that. I have to commend my staff for what they have to put up with and how, they, how they're handling uh, uh, things back there. We've increased uh, uh, mask usage, um, even over at the courthouse with uh, uh, screening and so forth. So uh, with uh, uh, the little spike we had, um, we just uh, worry a little more. You know, the troopers are bringing stuff off the interstate that I don't know what state they've been in, where they've been. A lot of the 24-7 people that come in also, you don't know where they've been hanging out and stuff. So we're, staff is struggling, but they're doing a good job of keeping up and stuff. But uh, what's sad is I got 22 beds up there and only can use seven because I can't put anybody else up there uh, because of, uh, um, <clears throat> they just go out in the public every day. So um, other than that, in the 24-7, uh, you know, the numbers are staying uh, uh, that we can kind of handle. You know, we've been, uh, before COVID, we had 157 on the program, and we only have 83 on there right now, but it still keeps us busy. I have three on a drug patch, 26 on PBT, so uh, 52 come in each day to blow. I have six on a remote breath test, and I don't know if you're familiar with that. I talked about the remote breath test. That's a little machine that they blow at certain times, and it, it's a visual. It takes a picture, picture of them uh, blowing. Uh, i got six on that. i got 19 on SCRAM. Uh, 18 UAs, uh, that's not including uh, a drug court or hope court, got 11 on GPS. So that helps to keep them, keep them out of jail, the, the GPS. I know those are low-grade uh, uh, crimes that are not a threat to society. Uh, other than that, uh, we've uh, utilized uh, our telemed and our cars, our computers. We're dealing with a little more mental illness calls. Uh, but we're, we're able to use our telemed. It's, uh, it's working good. Where they want to talk to a counselor, you can talk to a counselor in Sioux Falls. And, and uh, so far, they've released the person, you know, come up with a safety plan so we don't have to take them to the sheriff's office and, and then call a counselor and things like that. So, so that's being utilized. And, and uh, uh, so far, it's been, we had some connectivity problems uh, a while back, but we got that solved. And, and it was on the It, that's working properly. So unless you have any questions, that's all I have. Question? I guess I'd like to thank Marty uh, going from above and beyond for a situation out on the interstate last week. Uh, um, I've read it. Uh, 
you might let the other commissioners know what <laughs> took place. Was that with, when they helped that family? Yeah, uh, I think yeah. that was a pretty good deal. Yeah, I, I mean, that was just, uh, uh, it, it was no big deal at all. I'm sure everybody, yeah. anybody would do it. Uh, just uh, my wife and, and, and daughter were coming from uh, Watertown, and there was a, a, a car alongside the uh, interstate up on the off-ramp at the, at the uh, white corner. And of course, you couldn't miss it because there was four kids sticking their heads out the window, waving, kind of just being friendly and stuff. And I asked them if they needed help, and, and um, uh, they had just hit a deer and no way to get to Sioux Falls. So my wife and daughter took the two youngest kids and the wife to Sioux Falls, and, and then I stayed with the husband until he got, got help and stuff. So it was really, but anyway, anyway, it's funny. He put that on Facebook, and it got like 900 likes. So oh. I, I didn't save anybody's life, but... Uh, uh, maybe to them they did. And it was a nice family. They end up being a uh, pastor. They're, they're, they're both pastors. And I don't know if you ever pay attention. When you go into Sioux Falls at the, crook, at the Crooks exit, there's that beautiful country church to the west. They're pastors in that church. Meeting. So now they become friends. So I told them, well, one of these days we're going to come and hear a sermon. So anyway. But yeah, thanks. It, uh, I'm sure anybody would have did the same thing. It just uh, They were nice people. So. All right. Yeah, Thank you. Well, thanks, Any thanks. other questions for the sheriff? Hearing none. Thank you for your report. Yeah. Bob? I could use Hill. those 900 likes when I run for election again, I guess, huh? <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning. My office, we've had a, of course, we had budget hearing last month. I-29 bypass, we're still working on, now they're going away from putting, putting a large culvert under the bypass, 20th Street overpass, so we'll have to wait and see. That one's still fluid. They, there's still a long way before they come get a floodplain development permit on that one. Oh, had 911 budget hearing, had a Department of Transportation briefing on the 26th with a Zoom type meeting, had a meeting with the city manager talking emergency management topics. On the census, I've been on the radio three different times. I went on June 25th, July 2nd, and it looks like June 18th. We, I go on the radio at uh, about 10.30 on a Thursday. Every Thursday, I'm, I'm set up to go on and we talk basic census topics, try to explain to people how they can go on, if they don't have their, their number, how they can still get into the census and the importance of the census. So we're hitting that as hard as we possibly can. And uh, July, yesterday we had an emergency management drill, zoning meeting tonight, siren test for the outdoor warning sirens is today at 1 p.m. 9 July, Thursday, there's a PPCC meeting. The training I had put in for in Pier on 15 July has been canceled. We're going to post, reschedule it as an online type thing in September. 20 of July, there's a NACO annual conference I plan on taking. It's, it's a free type thing. I'm going to take it from my office. It's a Zoom, Zoom NACO meeting, but I'm going to attend that. And from the planning and zoning side of the house, in 2019, up until the end of June, we gave 49 building permits. In 2020, we gave 63. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're actually increasing building permits this year. Any questions? Any questions for Bob? Hearing none, thank you, Bob, for your report. Vicki? We'll let Vicki come up and do her report. Treasurer's office. Good morning. Morning. Just to kind of give you a rundown, um, we did have a distress warrant mobile home sale on June 23rd. We had three mobile homes that were on that sale, and we ended up selling one of them. One did not go to sale because the owner was in China, we found out and did make arrangements to get that paid. 
And another one over in Volga went to sale, but it wasn't purchased. So the one in Brookings was purchased, and it paid the taxes, and so we're good to go there. We probably have a few more on the un, um, uncollectible list, which will be later in the um, meeting. But the reason for that, I think, is all the cleanup that is being done out on South Main. So that is a good thing to get some of those taken care of. And also, um, we had 900 and about $950,000 worth of motor V work in June, and it was the biggest month in the last, well, biggest month we've ever had. So just to give you an idea there, and I think it's probably due from being closed for a while and also with all the new vehicles that are being purchased. But yeah, we've been busy, but it is the biggest month we've ever had. So other than that, it's been business as usual. If anybody has any questions. Do I have any questions for Vicki? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Dustin, we'll have the BCOAC report. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so we'll start with the attendance since our last meeting. Uh, in the archery range, we had 56 people coming and shoot bows and arrows. Uh, the gun range, we had 97. Um, arrow mates and Midwest maidens, I've been talking with them about possibly starting something up in the fall. Um, the arrow mates wouldn't be a problem keeping the distance. Midwest maidens, um, it's a roller derby. I told them you can't be hit. You guys know how the roller derby goes, and they actually have nationwide their own guidelines as well so they just kind of wanted to come in and practice um, all their bouts were canceled for the year so they'd keep their distance um, we had our blood drive uh, june 29th 50 people came to that that went very well i thought this last sunday we had a concealed carry class um, the class was full but we had three people back out at the last minute um, july 29th we have an rso class scheduled to try to get some more volunteers in the range um, we had a pistol range committee um, on the 14th, and we're working on updating some of the SOPs that we use for the gun range. Um, the SDSU sponsorship agreement, like we talked about at the budget hearing, I talked to him, and they're kind of in the same boat as everybody. Um, as of right now, they're still planning on a normal season, so we'd still get our sponsorship credit. But in our contract, um, on force majeure, if something were to happen, we could rearrange, say, for example, something happened to football season, we could add more to our basketball season or our wrestling season. And he said, worst case scenario, there could be a possible refund. So they're uncharted waters as well. They kind of plan day by day. Um, for the generator, um, I'm still waiting on one quote from one of the electricians, but I sent out kind of a little RFP and I asked them a few questions. The first one was the cost of the generator. Um, the second one was, is it possible to put a switch in to only power certain things in the building so we could still use Bob's 70 amp generator? Yes, that is possible. We just have to go into the main panel and shut breakers off. Um, and if we were to install this 300 amp generator, we could use a smaller generator. They both said yes. And then if we had a bigger generator, um, it could still hold up to the 300 amps. Um, the power will be down for a day or two if, they, if we do decide to install this. Um, and then the other thing we were talking about, we don't have a generator that big. So I contacted Bose. They have a generator. Uh, Prusman's has a generator. And also Train, the, our HVAC provider, who services our HVAC, they have generators as well as in Minneapolis. Um, and they can get them here within 48 hours. Um, I talked to them if there's a huge snowstorm, obviously they couldn't. But um, I don't know if you guys had any questions on that. I'm just waiting on one more price um, from the other electrician, and then I can bring that back to the next commission meeting. Um, and then Southpaw contract, we can talk about that later in the meeting. And then the surplus of the buttresses, I have that an action item as well um, and then 
yesterday, Kelloland Living, I don't know if you guys watched that show, um, it's on at 2 o'clock. Um, they stopped by and they did a little interview with the BCOAC. Uh, they did four other businesses in Brookings County. And that's all I had, unless you guys had any questions. That also got posted on social media because yes, my did. wife told me about it. Yeah, so. the two girls that are hosts in the show, they came in and shot some arrows and bows and arrows. Yep. Yeah, so you got that lot, was kind of neat. You got a lot of coverage on yeah. social media besides Kelly's yeah. report. So yeah. that's good. Ryan was teaching me to step up my yeah. game a little bit. <laughs> Angie has a question. Uh, Dustin, do we have a late cancel fee on concealed carry classes or any of that kind of stuff so, so that we've got a wait list or something yes, like that? Yes, that's another thing that we're working on um, because it has happened in the past from my understanding. Uh, we're talking about maybe doing like a $50 non-refundable fee to where if you don't show up, um, there was a few people on the wait list we got added to, to boost the attendance, but yes, we need, we're, we need to work on that. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? I, I was wondering, I can't remember, are we having um, people that are using the facility, do they sign any type of release? Yeah, they sign a waiver when they come in, yep. And does that waiver cover anything re related to COVID-19? As far as, like, if someone were to come in the facility that mm -hmm. had it? Yeah. I'm just wondering, Dan, if that's not something you should take a look at that release and see if we need anything related to the virus in there. Are you asking that something be put in there? I am. If, if, if it would be appropriate, I just, I, I'm seeing other entities that are putting that in their releases. So that might be something we should be considering. Okay. Do you want me to send that over, or do you have a copy of that? I don't think I do. I'll send you the copy okay. that we're using. No, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I know. I mean, even any of the youth tournaments that we travel to, are all, all the parents are signing releases when they yeah. go to the tournaments yeah. and stuff. And so I, I think it makes sense to either add that to that since <coughs> yeah. that I mean, there's people from all over coming in the building. Yeah. yeah so whether whether somebody is going to get it there, if they get it there, or bring it more, yeah. if they would come in and they wouldn't hold us, release us or whatever, in case they received it while shooting there. Yeah. So. Caught it, but I think it's a good idea. Question I have is this going to be a separate document they signed, or do you want to integrate it into the release we have now and leave it there? I, I think it can be in the release that we've got. I don't need, yeah. think we need a separate document. Yeah. Are you signing separate documents for youth sports? Is it all in the one release? No, we are. Yeah, we're it's because normally we have our own insurance and everything mm. like that, but now. Wherever we go, I, I don't know if the city's requiring it or the organization <laughs> that's running it. It's a separate COVID document. That's what but I was going to ask you. But I don't think, I mean, we can add it. Can we add a bullet point on there, a release portion of what that's in that document, and just update it, basically? Yeah. I don't think it matters which way. I think yeah. Dan can decide yeah. whether it's two can, documents or one document you, when he looks I mean, at it. COVID's not going away tomorrow. So, I mean, <laughs> it's not like, you know, so it could be. 10, five, 10 years that we continue to deal with this. So to have it in our normal one probably just makes sense. Sounds good. Good. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions for Dustin? If not, stand by for your action items. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike Holhauser did not return. So I think we've covered. Move into regular business. Item A is an action to approve resolution number 20-42, a resolution authorizing the purchase of HVAC systems, installation and service with related products and supplies through source well. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, and we'll have a report. This is for um, replacement of the chillers over at the courthouse. Uh, we do have $100,000 budgeted this year. Uh, Dan and I have kind of worked through this process to use SourceWell or use Johnson Controls uh, bid through SourceWell to get this done. Um, in speaking with Johnson Controls, who currently um, services the courthouse, they have been kind of limping the system along for the last couple of years. So this is um, something that definitely is needed over there. All right, any questions or comments? Commissioner Pierce. 
first, first of all, and I guess maybe this is a question more for Stacy or Dan, I'm not sure. When you look at the warranty information that's contained in here, it says three different things in three different places. And I'm not sure reading out what warranty we get. The, um, the original document says one year and then five years on, one year on parts and then five years on, on the chiller. And then everywhere down below says 90 days um, and that the 90 days provision supersedes everything else everywhere. And I think we need to get clarified what our warranty is on this piece of equipment because, because they're contrary to each other in there. And then um, the other thing that, that I noticed about it, I think in our resolution where we say recently completed, and I know this sounds a little picky, but they didn't recently complete it. They did it in 2017. It took me a while to figure out what we were doing because we said recently they went through the bid process. And I would do an amendment at the proper time to just delete the word recently because they did it in 2017. And then <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to ask Stacy about was we've had this conversation before and they talk about the 30 days payment schedule. Are we able to do that within always within 30 days? I thought we had a notice issue, but is that to get it paid within 30 days? We, in a few other contracts, we've changed that 30-day provision. Typically, I mean, it's, it's pretty rare that we wouldn't get it paid within 30 days. Okay. Um, we can sure look at that and see yeah. what that is. I think it's, I think we've actually probably increased that to 30 days on some things okay. because some have said, two weeks or something, and that sometimes just isn't feasible, but 30 days is, We're gonna I be would, okay. yeah, I would think, sure think so. And the other question I had was in the hours of work, and, and they will only work on the project 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and I don't quite understand exactly where the work will be taken, taking place and the amount of noise, and want to know if there should be some provision in there that, that um, the noise on Mondays, which is the big court date, that the noise, that they'll try to take that into consideration when they can, something like that. Because if you can't hear in the courtroom, you cannot conduct court, and you might have 100 defendants, not in today's age, but we don't know when all this is gonna happen, and people are slowly coming back to the courtroom. It just, we need to be a little, considerate of, of that court schedule on Mondays. And I don't know about Tuesdays. Dan could speak more to that than I can. And I, we've been working with Johnson Controls for years, mm -hmm. and I, this type of work would absolutely be scheduled. So um, <clears throat> I don't think that it would be an issue to schedule around a Monday morning court. Um, when, but I... I've never had any complaints about them coming to do any type of maintenance work and it being too noisy because I don't think the work is being done. I sat many times yeah. in the courtroom when there was something it was going too loud on. that you could not hear people talk, that it was a problem. I don't think it hurts for us just to say we'd like to have something about that in the contract. But those, those would be the things that, that I saw, but the warranty thing was of concern. Any other comments? The chillers are outside or in the basement? They're outside. They're outside on the south side of the building. So are you talking, area. that's where most of the work will take place is outside? So. So do you hear noise inside from outside? Is that what you're Sometimes. talking about? Okay. On the opposite side of the building? Pardon me? Opposite side of the building? I can't remember that for sure. I just. Yeah, I have no idea how much noise is involved in replacing chillers. Outside, so if we at least schedule it, we'll be fine, I think. So I don't think it needs to be in the contract. So if you want to make an amendment to the contract to remove the word recently. Uh, uh, I would move on the resolution that we delete the word recently in the second whereas.
Is there a second? Second. Okay. Comments. Uh, as I read this, has recently gone through a competitive bidding process for HVAC systems. Doesn't mean it was ours. That they done no. it competitively somewhere else. And, and we could have clarified that, but I didn't think that that was necessarily what we had in mind. But they did go through the process in seventeen. With ours, but I think as I read this, it just says that we've recently gone through the process with related products and supplies. Okay, now we can change it. Any other comments on the amendment? Call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Now we'll go back to the main motion as amended. Anything else we need to change? How are we going to handle the warranty issue? Either we amend it at this point to change it, and the resolution goes back to them to approve it, or we have to tape the lit and ask them to change it. So is this something we need to sign or do that we have to do today? Could Stacy go back and talk to them about the warranty issue or, or whoever it is that should be um, handling that? When are we expecting these chillers to be put in place? Yesterday. I don't know what what did we talk to them about when they wanted to commence the work as soon as we've approved this or I think they would get it on their schedule as soon as possible okay would a delay cause us we're talking at least two weeks yep and if Deferred. it helps I can explain that on page two of the document from Johnson it says this project will include a one-year parts and labor warranty and a five-year compressor warranty, which I think that five-year might be standard. Then when you go down to page three, it says that they warrant the equipment for the 90 days from date of delivery of equipment. And, and then they've got more terms in there and that this, per, this provision in the terms and conditions supersedes any other warranty. So if our compressor went out in three years, we could be having a conversation about which warranty applied, and we want to be sure that we've got that covered. Because I think we want the five-year warranty, obviously, on those compressors. I'm looking at about the fourth sentence down. It says that uh, JCI warrants for equipment furnished or installed, but not manufactured by JCI. JCI will extend the same warranty terms and condition which JCI receives from manufacturer of said equipment. I'm going to guess the compressor is a manufacturer's warranty for five years. So it thus states that they would they would extend that for five years. I, that's a guess, and it may be, but well, we need I'm, to clarify. You know, that's, that's how I read it. It's, it ha does have a manufacturer's warranty on the compressor. Well, and I, the 30 days is the appearance or discovery of the defect. And so if within 30 days... Where are you looking at, Dan? Just under couple. the warranty yeah. subsection. That's for equipment not installed by them. Such defect. Defective equipment. Equipment installed by JCI if the purchaser pr provides written notice of any such defect within 30 days after the appearance or discovery of such defect. So it's a one-year warranty, but we have to let them know within 30 days of discovering it. That's how I read it. That's how I read it. And it says up above it'd be five years. So as long as you provide notice of the defect within 30 days, you're still protected for that five years. I don't read that that way. How would you like to proceed? This 
looks to me to be like a standard operating agreement. So I'm curious if, if we try to make some changes, how we word it and how will they receive that change and will we get it repaired while it's still warm outside? Well, I, th I think that there are a number of ways that we could do that, but what we do is where it says this project will include a one-year parts and labor warranty and a five-year compressor warranty and nothing in paragraph down below abrogates well, the five-year warranty. If, if you added, what, what does abrogate the warranty is if the um, manufacturer does a one-year and five. And mm -hmm. so if in the contract said one-year parts, five-year compressor as per manufacturer warranty, then would that then clarify that the manufacturer is giving that warranty? Um, because it says 90 days unless we will extend uh, the same warranty as the manufacturer has. So if you could state that that was a manufacturer's warranty, that would outline that they're accepting that as a warranty because that's what the manufacturer is, is warranting also. Do, do we know that the manufacturer gives a five-year warranty no. on these compressors? See, that's the problem. Right. But that's what we'd have, that's what mm -hmm. we'd have to ask and say, well, yeah. whose warranty is this one in this line here? And if it's as per the manufacturer's warranty, then we would know that that's where we're getting it from the manufacturer. We're getting 90 days from Johnson Controls to, to fix it or mm -hmm. whatever if it's you know, not not a manufacturer. If there's no manufacturer warranty at all, or whatever. Yeah. And that, I, I think we should. When we're spending almost a hundred thousand dollars, and we look at it, and three of us have three different interpretations on what that means, we need clarification because the chiller could go out in that five-year period, and we wouldn't want to have to buy a new one or to have a lawsuit to determine what that warranty meant. So I'm hearing table. To, uh, to uh, Commissioner Krogman's suggestion, the project will include a one-year parts and labor warranty, uh, or, labor or parts and labor manufacturer's warranty, and a five-year manufacturer's compressor warranty. Those two words inserted would take care of it. If that's the case. But we don't know that. We don't know that. We'll yeah. have to find that out. But uh, that's uh, that's my guess is what it is. And that's what they're saying. Well, because then it's referenced back in the warranty area that any manufacturer's warranty would be covered. So this, if this just said manufacturer's warranty in those two spots, it is addressed to the same in the warranty paragraph. But again, are we changing something that? It's not part of the boilerplate. I think we're going to have some unsatisfied people if we don't table it. So let's just table it. And somebody, I mean, we do a lot of business with Johnson Control. They can explain okay. that to us. I'm just trying to figure out a way to move forward so we can get the chiller in place so if there's a motion to table. Um, I would move to table and coordinate with Johnson Controls to have it installed the day after the next meeting. So we're, your motion is to the table to the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made, seconded, table to the next meeting. We'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B is an action to approve resolution number 20-43, a resolution for giving juvenile liens and authorizing the finance office and register of deeds to remove them from the county's record. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Most made and seconded. Is there a report? This is something that was done starting in the 1990s where these were leaned. It's for juvenile detention costs, and there's a few court-appointed attorneys. We do not have any um, of the juveniles' birth dates, social security numbers, any identifying um, information on those. And... They cannot be leaned, and they're in our system, and when they go to a register of deeds to do a lien search, they show up, and we cannot collect them anyway. So just to get them off the system so they are not 
on the system. That's what we are looking to do. Thank you for the report. Are there any questions? Any comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item C is an action to approve resolution number 20 44, a resolution placing mobile homes on the uncollectible list. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments or report? This is the uncollectible list that we have to keep in our office. And if there's ever a time that um, we can collect it, they can come off the list and be put back on the books, which has happened one time in the last few years. And um, that is just the uncollectible list that we have to have in our office. All right, thank you. Any other comments? Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item D is an action to approve resolution number 20-45, a resolution authorizing the execution of contractual agreement or documents with the state of South Dakota for the receipt of CARES Act funds to address the COVID-19 public health crisis. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Have a report on this. So these next uh, documents, both the resolution and the agreement, are part of what is required from the state in order to get the um, CARES or the COVID uh, reimbursement that the state, state received a dollar amount from federal government and they are dispersing them. So um, counties or counties and cities were required to pass these, this, uh, this resolution, the next agreement um, in order to receive those funds. Any questions or comments? Any comments? Call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item E is an action to approve agreement number 20-32, a state of South Dakota local government COVID re recovery fund reimbursement agreement. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Most made and seconded. A report? S same report. Any questions or comments? Any comments? Now we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item F is an action to approve agreement number 20-33, amendment 1 to agreement number 20-20, a state of South Dakota Department of Health, Division of Family and Community Health, subrecipient agreement between Brookings County and the state of South Dakota, Office of Child and Family Services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there a report? This increases the county's grant amount by $544 due to, due to some minor changes out there, but it needed the amending document approved. Any other questions or comments? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item G is an action to approve agreement number 20-34, Brookings City and County Government Center custodial contract general specifications between Brookings County, City of Brookings, and ISS facilities services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any report on the contract? This is uh, this was put out for bids. ISS facility services was submitted the low bid for custodial services here at the government center. Um, this is the contracted cleaning service that comes in evenings during uh, the week and, and cleans here. They've been the contracted the contractor who's been doing that for us for a number of, number of years now. Um, this contract is for two years with the uh, option to extend that for um, two additional one-year terms. Um, and this was, I believe, on the city council's agenda for approval as well. We have that signed from them. So, um, and the, the, there, were, there were two bids submitted. The bid tab was included in the packet. Any other qu questions or comments? Any comments? If not, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Brokeman? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Adam H. is an action to approve agreement number 20-35, the first amendment to agreement number 17-27, a 
an agreement with Election Systems and Software LLC for election services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there a report? Uh, Brookings County uh, currently has a three-year agreement with ESNS. Uh, ESNS stands for Election Systems and Software. This is a company who provides us our ballot layout, coding, programming. Um, in your packet, I attached the agreement, the original agreement that was approved back in 2017. What you're taking action on is the first amendment to the agreement, which extends the agreement for another three years. Um, so this would, um, if you do approve this, it would it would take effect, uh, it was back in April 18th, um, but due to some changes in our office, um, it kind of slipped through some of the cracks in emails. So um, I did have State's Attorney Dan Nelson review the agreement, um, and I do, uh, I think Stacy provided in her packet just to let you guys know that um, the county has had uh, a relationship with these guys for almost 18 years. So, as far as I, back as I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> My recommendation would be to continue with ESNS for another three years. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item I is an action to approve agreement number 20-36, an independent contractor agreement between Brookings County and Southpaw Defense, LLC. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. You guys have any questions on that at all? Nobody? I can kind of, uh, Michael Kilmer, he's an RSO out there. He's been helping me out a ton. Um, my attention and I agreed with it, but I was going to increase the price of our class to offset those costs. I did a little research, and we're sitting pretty good on the price of our class right now. Um, and if Michael Kilmer wanted to, um, he could just rent the classroom for $200 and do this class himself. But he's, I think he's doing us a favor on partnering with us, teaching this class. And then if we do get a full class, we can profit seven to $800 on this class. And we're doing one, one a month till the end of the year. Yeah, and the history behind that was exactly that, that yep. Mike could do his own class if he wanted to and yep. not include us, but he's willing to teach and get a flat fee from us. Takes a little risk out of him because mm -hmm. he's always going to get his money there and we can make a profit, but he, you know, I think it's a good partnership with Mike and he's been really yeah, good Yeah, he's to been us. great to work with and he has to keep his credentials up to date too and that involves him going to peer to keep all that stuff. Any other questions or comments? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Item J is an action to approve agreement number 20-37, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy in Richland Township. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments? Standard. Just a typical bore. Okay. Any other comments, questions? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Adam K is an action to approve agreement number 20-38, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Brookings Municipal Utilities in Bedary Township. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. What made in second and a report on this one? This is a project that uh, BMU approached me about and much like Leanne said earlier about uh, the timeline of this project, we'd be looking at possibly fall. And my concern was is that since their timeline is very open on this, that we have significant notice so we can notify the, the local producers out there because as with a lot of the roads down there, um, this one primarily now with that six ton bridge we have on County Road 12 that we they'd be using this. Uh, and they assured me that the work that would take place within our right of way would be less than a day. So I, I, outside of that, um, obviously a lot longer, but um, I did wanna make sure that you guys were aware of this out there just because the amount of construction going on out there and now with uh, with our 
six ton bridge that keeps getting pushed back uh, that they've been utilizing this but the construction would be minimal in, in our within our right of way thank you any comments or questions any comments hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion carries item l is an action to approve agreement number 20-39 an application for occupancy of right of way of county highways Highways made by Sioux Valley Energy and Trenton Township. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. In any report or comments? Just removing the uh, overhead power lines and installing underground. Any right, other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item M is an action to approve the third and fourth quarter general fund transfer per. Budget appropriations from General Fund 101 4 911 4290 to Emergency Management Fund 226 3 371 0000 and the amount of $42,500. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Is there a report? You want to go ahead? This is. <laughs> go ahead. This is the the remaining um, budget appropriations, general fund transfers to transfer over to emergency management uh, to get that uh, get that process of getting that fund rebuilt back up. So this is the first step in that. Um, usually we do these quarterly, but we know that this money is going to need to be transferred, so we're just doing that now. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item N is an action to approve the renewal of a retail on off malt, uh, on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine license for Smokin's Pub and Grub. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any comments on this one? Uh, no, this following business is just renewing their retail on off malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine license. Um, for July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Um, you guys took action on several others a few weeks ago. Um, this is just one of the last ones. Any hey, comments from the Sheriff's Department? Any violations? Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item O is an action to declare buttresses as <laughs> surplus property to be transferred to Dual County. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. A report on this. Uh, do you guys have any questions on this? This was started before I uh, started out at the BCIC. I got with Paul Weiss and um, Jason Overby, two groups that use those buttresses out there quite a bit. Um, I'll get in contact with Dual County and get those to them. Uh, there's 27 of the spider web fronts which go on those that type of buttress um, that can't be used anymore, but they thought maybe, I believe it's the 4-H in Dual County could use those a little bit. Okay. Thank you, any questions or comments? Any comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, motion carries. Item P is an action to approve a fireworks display at Lake Ponson on Saturday, August 22nd, 2020 at dusk. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any report on this? So this request came from Julie Meyer. Uh, they would like to conduct a fireworks display on, uh, on Lake Ponset, uh, South Lake Ponset, which is in Brookings County on Saturday, August 22nd. This is part of a family reunion that's going to be held there. Um, I have talked to Julie uh, since this, since I did my report. Um, asking if she did know of the exact location, and it's going to be at that 170 South Lake Drive location. I know there was, um, in the email, there were several locations given because they weren't entirely sure at that point um, where they were going to be doing that. But um, if approved, we would uh, make sure to keep the uh, Sheriff's Department as well as the Fire Department in the loop that this is happening. So. Um, we get it on my calendar and make sure that we make those entities aware uh, and remind them as that that date It's a little closer questions or comments from the commission any objection from the sheriff's department 
Do we need to uh, let Hamlin or the county know that because they're I mean that line is right there I think and so right it's on it's on South Lake Drive which is in Brookings County but yeah we would let the um, the area fire departments know or the responding fire department for that location know that this is taking place we would make sure that the right entities are aware of it I can see Hamlin County getting the call and not knowing right yeah we would let them on. know so I think we need to communicate that to everybody in the yep. area. Uh, can we also caveat that approval with any kind of weather condition situation if it's super windy or it ends up being super dry that that's not on the table anymore that could happen in August it could get dry and I mean be a burn ban in effect too I mean that's if exactly there's a burn right. ban in effect they should not be shooting off fireworks and I think you could make uh, amend that motion to say if, if there is a burn ban in in place that they are not allowed to conduct the the fireworks display and then I would just keep in touch with Ms. Meyer about that that's, sounds reasonable I mean it is, it is gonna be on on the lake but I mean if the winds blow in the wrong direction right you know, it could Pretty open pasture somebody would like to make that amendment I would move to amend to include um, provisional approval Pending no burn ban in place. Is there a second? Second. Any comments on the amendment? Hearing none. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries on the amendment. Now back to the main motion. Is there any other comments or questions? Who puts the burn ban in place? The commission would. Fire chief. Fire that would. Fire chief brings it. Forward. Yeah, the fire. Yeah, the fire department association would bring that request forward, and the commission would put that in place. So we would know. We would be well aware of it. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those, all those in favor of the main motion as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. FGQ, excuse me, is an action to appoint a county delegate and approve the voting credentials for the NACO virtual annual business meeting on July twentieth, twenty twenty. If someone knows they will attend this meeting, the board can appoint them as the county's delegate. Otherwise, the board can authorize our state association to receive our ballot. Is there a motion to approve? Is anybody going to make it? I think, Bob, you're going to be online watching this, aren't you? Yes, sir, I am. I will also be attending. All right, we'll go to winner. <laughs> we have two votes or one? Just the one. We just the one. one. Just one. Just one. Okay. So at this point, the motion would. I would make a motion that we appoint uh, Commissioner Borzma as our uh, NACO representative for a voting delegate. Second. Any comments or questions? I'm going to take this as an amendment to the motion. We will attend, and Commissioner Borzma then will be. Or do you want to take it as a friendly amendment? You're just appointed. Okay. I hate friendly amendments, but we'll accept it as a friendly amendment. Is there any comments or questions? Hearing, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. That doesn't mean we can't all phone in and listen, but also you're let, authorized to do the vote. Also, let me know who you want us to vote for because that's a consensus item. You have to give us a report on our options. <laughs> we'll take a look, I guess. Uh, commission, commission Department Director's Report. Um, as Brian had stated earlier, I put some information about uh, the county's county receiving the one uh, federal bridge grant. Um, we'll be going through what that looks like for the budgeting process this afternoon. Um, Commissioner Borsman and I met with Rick Nicholson out at the Madari Monument site a few weeks ago. He did provide an updated quote. Um, that quote was $6,800. I think that was, it's gone up maybe about $1,000 or so, give or take, to do the repairs at the monument site. We have money in the budget this year, so I'm just kind of looking for a consensus to move forward. I think we uh, the board had already said yes, we're going to go out and, and do the repairs at that monument. But if I can just get a consensus again to move forward um, because we received the updated quote, then we'll let him know and we'll get on his 
on his list um, because it sounded like he was pretty full, pretty busy. So it'll be a fall the sooner project. We, yeah, sooner we let him know, the better. So am I seeing a bunch of heads shaking? Yes, 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 yes. Moving forward, okay. Um, as part of my report too, I know at budget time we discussed the uh, the county's chamber membership level, and so I reached out to. Uh, Kelsey at the chamber to ask about um, just give us some more information on what those chain those member those benefit levels look like and right now we're at that sustainer that nine hundred dollar level um, looks like the next the next level up the investor would would double our um, our chamber dues so I don't know if that's something um, we want to do this year to see if we can add to that or if we just wait and do that within 2021 as a new level or we leave it as is or anything any direction I guess if there's anything you want me to do sooner rather than later after reviewing the documents that you gave us I think we should just leave it alone when we attend an event um, and we request the extra tickets, does that bring us into that? When you say we get two tickets, but all of us go, we buy the extra tickets, where does that bring us? Typically, or at least recently, the, the, the commission has been um, just getting a table instead of individual tickets, so I don't know. Um, Not sure is that is that That's this chamber there, hosted yeah, event ticket kind of small. two and then we would get eight um, three hundred dollar value max yeah really the yeah the added the added would be one more business membership which I'm not sure that that does much for us uh, six additional it looks like that's probably the chamber annual meeting tickets, and then a golf team of four in their party event that they have each year, and then our logo on the homepage of the Chamber website for the extra $900. So right now, your question, Larry, was? Right, are we still, are we, our dues? Are nine hundred dollars, and then if we over the year, do we actually buy more seats and end up in the investor level anyway? And we would there would still be a cost, a membership cost to all of these events that we attend through the chamber. So okay. it looks like we would get two tickets approved and eight approved at investor level, so six tickets. At fifty dollars a ticket is three hundred dollars, so we're still under the eighteen hundred. Okay. You can just leave it alone for now, and if we want to, we can revisit it um, maybe next year when it comes due again. Okay. With my report, also there's the SDACC elections. The this will take place at uh, fall convention in September which will be down at Sioux Falls, the Ramcota. So you can see um, of who is in that, uh, can't, in, that in those positions now and, and what, they're, what they're looking for. So if there's any interest in that, you can visit with me about that. Um, there's information on SDDOT upcoming STIP meetings. And um, you also did receive a save the date for um, a virtual conference. This came from our SDACC president, Cindy Heiberger. She's a commissioner down in Minnehaha County. Uh, it's called Mission Possible, Reducing the Impact of Substance Abuse and Mental Illness in Our Communities. That conference is uh, August 19th and 20th. So I think right now that's kind of all the, the information, the dates and times are out there. 
Um, just to kind of get this on your calendar, I'm guessing that more information will come out. This is all I have right now as to how to be, take, uh, be a part of that meeting will come out a little bit um, as it gets a little bit closer. So um, other than that, I really don't have uh, too much else other than um, this, this afternoon we do have the budget hearings at 1 o'clock. The bid opening for the jail expansion is this Thursday at 2 o'clock, and um, this room is reserved, the chambers is reserved uh, to do that. And then just if you don't have it on your calendar already, uh, Safety Week, July 20th through the 24th, coming up quickly. Uh, the safety picnic is July 23rd. I will be sending out, we're doing it a little bit different this year, we'll have... Um, a sign up for meals. Did you receive anything on that yet from Michelle? If not, I'll get that sent out. Um, you have to pick. We're doing kind of a box lunch style, so uh, you have to pick what you would like if you plan to attend that. Um, so I'll get that information out to you here later today. So that's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Any questions for Stacy? No questions. We'll do the state's attorney's office report. Nothing new to report. All right, we'll go on to the commissioner's reports. We'll start with Leanne. On June 18th, I attended the budget hearings with the rest of you, and we'll finish that up this afternoon. On June 24th, I attended the BEDC quarterly meeting. Um, we received approximately 130 applicants for Al Hooten's position. They were still coming in, at the, but we had 130 at the time that we had that meeting. So there's a lot of interest in the position. The hospital reported uh, on some virus issues. The interesting thing to me that I wanted to bring back to you, they said that the Brookings Health System is now completing about 60 virus tests per day, which I thought was quite a large number. And then on June 30th, I attended the open house here at our building for the ribbon cutting on the electrical post. That's probably not the right name for it, where you can plug in electrical, the charging station. Charging Thank station. Thank you yeah. for the charging station. There were quite a few people there. I'd tell you who they were, but everybody had a mask on. I'm not sure I recognized most people with the mask on, but it was, it was nice, and we'll see how much that gets used. There's been a lot of Facebook co comment on the charging post, so we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> That'd thank, be my report. Thank you. Commissioner Borsman. On June 17th, we had a mental health coalition meeting. Hearings with the rest of you. And then on the 25th of June, we had our domestic abuse shelter board meeting via um, kind of shifted a little bit to quarterly Zoom meetings. And then we'll go into our budgeting process here over the rest of the summer. So that's it. Commissioner Krogman. Zoom meeting with Beta, <clears throat> uh, meeting with TSB. Uh, they're accumulating data from both us, from Beta, and um, Brookings School District on their wants and needs of a facility um, as they work towards the design process. Um, obviously, on the 18th, we had budget meetings. 22nd, uh, we ended up having an in-person meeting with, uh, with uh, TSP uh, to go over that. It took about two or three hours there, and um, <clears throat> we're able to look at some types of uh, how to design a, a, the facility on the lot that we have. A little bit longer of a lot rather than a square. And so your design uh, for has to be a little bit different. And so they're working on that. Um, then on the 29th, <clears throat> we had a BCOAC advisory board meeting. It went well. Uh, Dustin gave us a good report. Um, again, just trying to, it's a, it's a slower time of the year, obviously, during uh, during the summer for that facility. And so they're working on getting everything uh, arranged for hopefully a, a busy fall and winter season, um, and then working with uh, 4-H and uh, all that good stuff, and then starting the advertising and the marketing to sell uh, <clears throat> sell uh, memberships and get people using the facility. So uh, Then also we had a Brookings Health meeting that night after that. Um, you know, last time I had reported, they were kind of losing hemorrhaging money pretty fast and furious, which was understandable but they had quite a bit of cash on hand so they were not you know in dire straits or anything 
And then our meeting this time was an update that they're receiving uh, funds from the federal government, CARES Fund, and that kind of stuff that are pretty substantial that will hopefully help them uh, weather the storm. Um, they are, their, their uh, I say production or their surgeries and stuff are, are definitely up, upticking to where they're getting close to breaking even, even but uh, they're still not making money yet based off of uh, the amount of uh, surgeries and stuff done and all that kind of thing. So um, I think they're going to be in decent shape considering the, f the federal funds will help take care of the previous year month's losses that they have, have been there. So um, right now they're, they're in decent shape because of that. So, um, and then I was a part of a housing task force uh, conference call as far as a realtor, but also as kind of commissioner. And uh, part of that is uh, is on students coming back to, to uh, school and how that's going to be handled. Uh, it's a lot of it conversation is SDSU uh, on campus housing, but a lot of it also is um, the uh, uh, the the property managers that rent property outside of campus in in Brookings. And there's also in the county there's there's type of stuff too, and and they really uh, are emphasizing. Uh, the, the use of, of masks and other things by the public to help show uh, the students what they should be doing. Okay, uh, you know, it's, everybody has their right to do what they want to do, but if if uh, the students walk into Walmart and everybody's wearing a mask, they're going to probably say, okay, I probably need to wear a mask. Um, you know, same way with restaurants and different things like that. So. SDSU was really encouraging on this call to, to have the community of Brookings to step up and, uh, and, and even though they may not be mandatory in some areas, that they do it anyway um, to put an example towards the students coming back uh, because they're going to be coming from all different communities, different states where they have different rules and different stuff. And I, and I think uh, they just want the city to, to try to show how important it is. So because if... SDSU leaves early, you want to see a slowdown, that, that would be one of them right there, um, you know. And so, uh, you know, wearing a mask uh, uh, at, at the major grocery stores and um, shopping facilities and that kind of stuff, uh, because if there's a major outbreak, they'll, they'll send everybody home. And we don't want to see all of 8,000 students sent home in October and gone for the year because it's slow enough the way it is during the summer. Try to do that year long, and you want to see a, an economic issue in Brookings, that would be it. So they're encouraging us to um, to be cognizant of that and try to do everything we can to help the students and help not have a, a problem and make sure those students can come back and and uh, be on campus. So anyway, that was kind of the gist of that one. Um, and then... On the first, had a growth partnership meeting, and that was uh, talking about. Uh, um, it was a really good meeting. It's hard to explain what all was taking place there, but the collaboration between SDSU and the growth partnership and a new facility out there, and there's been a grant from the state to start the planning process of uh, egg bio uh, bio processing um, facility type of there out at the research park. So um, that's, it's a really exciting thing for SDSU, I think, and it's an exciting thing for the growth partnership. Uh, but it's, it's still a lot of work in place that's going to have to put this together. But um, they do have some funds that were a grant from the state for that, um, and that was a million dollars. So that was good. Anyway, that's just a couple of things there. I had a few meetings. All right. You're not? Okay. All right, Commissioner Johnson. Attended the budget hearings with everybody else uh, on the 24th. Uh, went to the, viewed the couple options for the cells for the jail. Um, pretty interesting what they can actually do. Uh, portable cells, and they brought them in in a truck, and we all had a chance to look at them. On uh, the 29th, advisory board meeting at the OAC, and uh, Dustin is you good update, so that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, 
Let's start out with the budget meeting on the 18th. Obviously, we we're all there. We will continue that this afternoon. On the uh, 24th, uh, also looked at the jail cells, and I think we, we uh, were enlightened by looking at them. It changed my mind on a couple things, in particular the finish to, to go to powder coat versus the other one. And so we, uh, it was a good, good deal that they brought those cells up so we could take a look at them. And, uh, we did have some other people from the sheriff's office and the jailers also took a look. We had the mayor of Brookings, Keith Corbett, came over and took a look. So we did have uh, good attendance uh, to look at those. They were here for about three hours, if I, I'm correct. Um, the 25th, we had the uh, E91 budget meeting on the go-to meeting. That was successful, and our budget looks good. Um, you know, we don't have to put any big amounts of extra money into it. It stayed about the same. On the uh, 29th, we had uh, jailer uh, Bart Sweeby, Sheriff's Deputy and myself, were interviewed by Calilan TV about the jail and the expansion and the jail cells. I uh, think that went well. We were interviewed on Monday and didn't get it televised till Wednesday, but it was on their website afterwards for people to look at, so I got a few comments about how old I looked. It wasn't fun, but yeah, I guess that's uh, the alternative. Um, July 1st was a COVID meeting with the city, and we've attended those. Bob Hill has attended those, uh, get our reports and our updates from the city council, what their changes were. Uh, obviously, they'll make some, some votes this evening on uh, solidifying their resolution. Uh, other than that, uh, 4th of July parade, I did attend the 4th of July parade representing myself, not the council as a candidate. So I did. I was in the 4th of July parade, and that was... Uh, pleased with uh, all, all the people lining the streets. It was a warm morning, but there were a lot, a lot of people out. So that was a good deal. So that concludes my report. We have next on our agenda, the right numbers. Item 13 is an executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1-25-2 parentheses 1 parentheses for personnel and contract negotiations. Is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. We will take a 10 minute recess and we'll meet in executive session. <laughs>